I'm coming in loud and clear. Might hear me on the radio. Breaker, breaker, one nine. Anybody got their ears on? Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms here in the Mounds, North Carolina. Tonight, a very short and simple video. I am going to be showing you all. We picked up for one of the stations in the area an FM quarter wave antenna. A lot of the kits that I've shown over the last couple of years on FM, uh, you know, community radio, pirate transmitters, whatever you want to call them, part 15 usually, they come with their own built-in antenna. It might be one that sticks out the back of the unit, or if you're lucky, it's one that has a cord and a magnet mount so you can put it somewhere higher up. The one that I purchased here is a quarter wave antenna. It was uh, about $35 with free shipping off of eBay, and it was a U.S. seller, which was nice, so it came relatively quickly. And it's, it's not much to it. It comes with cabling. It comes with everything you need pretty much to adapt a unit, you know, a, a tenth of a watt all the way up to probably 30 watts um, that it'll work with. And it does come with no instructions, but it does come with this, which is just a measurement sheet letting you know on the top there how many uh, millimeters for the megahertz you want to broadcast on. So I'm going to change the camera around. We'll put it on the table there. I'll show you how to assemble it, how easy it is to assemble. And then I've got two top post rails that I'm going to be using. We're going to put it high up in the air. And I'll show you uh, some range tests of what you can expect to get out of one of these little FM transmitters. Let's do it. All right, so it doesn't, it's not a whole lot to it. We've got our cabling, which on the one end is the, uh, you know, antenna base here. And on the other end is our plugs. And I think it was 15 meters, 15 feet. I can't remember what it said on the list, but it looks like a good pile. I'm hoping to get about 25 feet is what I need. So I can always use an extension cord if I have to. And then, like I said, here's our little sheet that shows adjustments that you can make. Flip that over there. Right. And it did come with this. So U-bolt brackets to bracket. These are kind of chintzy, I will say that. They're not exactly heavy duty. But if we can get that bolted to a bracket to put up in the sky, we're going to be in great shape. And then this ba bag here has our radials and our main masts. So we we'll go ahead and open this up and unload these. This one being the center, and you can see here if I get it up close, that's our adjustment, and then you tighten it down. So pretty much one measurement to get our SWR right, and that should be all we have to do. These three being uh, radials, ground plane radials here. So as far as installation, as far as assembly, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. We've got three holes down here at the bottom and one on the top and so I'm going to just begin assembly by screwing those in and that's just a matter of starting them don't want to start these with anything other than by hand because it looks like not the highest quality of steel but uh, that's just my opinion and once I get it um, started and get them tight I'll tighten them down just a little bit with a wrench you can see there is well it looks like maybe a 10 millimeter there it goes. Alright, so there's our three ground plane rods there. All right, that's going to give us our hopefully good good signal ratio. And then this is going to screw onto the top. And then, like I said, that looks like, I don't know, I'm thinking that's a 12 or a 13. So I'm going to tighten these down and then we'll make our final adjustment there and we'll be ready to put this up. This doesn't take any time. Skill level zero. So, if yeah, I mean, you should be able to pull this off. So now for my measurement. I'm going to have to get a tape measure here that gets um, millimeters and uh, I'll go by this chart here. Wow, okay, so the lower the end, the higher the mass is going to be. We're going to be transmitting at a relatively high, so I'm going to guess about 125 millimeters because that's going to be yeah, maybe one, 130 and we'll see what that gives us on the SWR reading. All right, so as you can see, there's just not a lot to it. We've got our measurements taken up front we've got our three ground elements here and then i've got it hooked to a uh, you can see down there that's one 10 foot piece of top post railing which makes for excellent masts or something like this i've got a second piece and i'm going to go ahead and attach that lay it up against the side of the house and then i'll have to figure out some way to attach it uh, permanently now an antenna this size can literally be held up by anything um, you can you could put that on chimney mount. You could put that anywhere, really. An old satellite dish mount would work with that. Not a lot of weight and not a lot of wind load, so just keep that in mind. All right, for our temporary install to test out the range of these things, here we go. 20 feet of piping. 
And at the very top of that is our antenna. As you can see, we are transmitting. So let's take a quick look at the setup inside and then we're on the road. All right, well here we are inside the 1670 AM radio station. This is my community radio station. I don't know that I've ever shared the exact setup. This is the building we built last year during COVID and I moved just my radio equipment out here. You can see I've got my mixer board here. I've got the CF30 Panasonic Toughbook out here. That runs with Shoutcast Stream and 1670 AM, my little Part 15 community radio station. That's hooked up to this. This is a Hamilton Rangemaster, and then I've got the antenna on the outside. With this setup, ideally during the day, about a mile and a half, at night, two miles, that's about what you're gonna get out of a Part 15 radio station. For today, for setting this up before I hand it off to somebody off the mountain to set up their own radio station, I'm gonna be testing that FM antenna. I've gone ahead and set it up on the side like you saw. I've got this Redicus radio set up. We've got it down to about a half a watt, which is the lowest that this thing will go. I believe that's still within part 15, but I'm not positive. And like I said, I don't usually mess with the FM side of things. I'm more of an AM radio guy. But to show what this thing is capable of under ideal conditions on the FM band, I thought it would be cool to take a drive around and see just how far this thing will transmit. If you've never seen my setup here, I've got this ability to do live shows. And really, it's just a matter of turning up your mic. Hey, everybody, it's 1670 AM radio. And I can slide that down and then cut back to the music, or I can slide it the other way and go all the way to just the microphone. And so this little mixer board does all that. Super simple to set this up. This was a flea market find, but you can find these online anywhere you want. So that's it. Let's take a ride. Let's get in the car. We'll, uh, I'll just set the camera there, and we'll just drive around and see what kind of range, half a watt, with this antenna will get us. All right, we're loaded up in the car. We are ready to rock and roll. Sorry about the positioning of the camera and the angle of the camera and all the rest of the complaints of the camera, but I'm flying solo today and I can't possibly hold on to this camera and drive the roads in this area. We're gonna be going on some pretty mountainous terrain, a lot of ups and downs. I'm curious uh, to see, you know, propagation wise, the AM tends to saturate into the low areas and the high areas. I'm curious how FM will perform, but let's go ahead and turn it on. We've got some, uh, you know, royalty-free music we'll be playing for YouTube, and let's do this thing. All right, this is 0.3 miles out. No break up yet. That's 0.5 miles. Seven, and you can hear a little bit of breakup.
Now the route I'm going to be taking kind of does a loop, so we will never get more than maybe three miles away from the house, but we'll be going on the low areas and the high areas and everywhere in between. I'm actually really impressed. That's 1.2 miles. Definitely got some breakup, but definitely still listenable. Is that a word? Listenable? Five miles. Looks like one point six miles is where the breakup really starts to kick in. Interesting that it's still locking a stereo signal at times, but that's not bad. So terrible performance on, on this side of the mountain. Terrible performance. We're in a low area. The AM radio doesn't get any reception here either, so this is this is pretty sad, but not totally unexpected. Stop to point out, so we're on the back side of the mountain. We're about maybe five, 600 feet lower than the antenna transmitter. But what I do like to point out here is that this is getting pretty good reception here where AM gets nothing. By the way, the crow flies, we're at about 2.1 miles. Um, so not bad, not bad at all. So about 1.2 miles out, we're starting to get a more steady signal. Still not that strong though. Even at 0.8, it's struggling to maintain the stereo lock. There we go, 0.7, it seems to have decided it likes itself again here. So 1.8 on one side and 0.7 on the other, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. Right on. And before you laugh at me about the music, uh, you can make fun of YouTube on that one, man. It, it got nothing but I gotta have royalty-free music that's legal to play over the YouTube airwaves, and this is what I came up with for this test drive. <laughs> Very patriotic for the 4th of July weekend. Coming up, about a half mile out. Nice signal at that range, but it ought to have that. I will say the fidelity, you know, the audio quality when it's got a stereo lock is way better than anything AM can produce. Even if I had the equipment to do an AM stereo, there'd be no one out there to be able to listen to it, but... It wouldn't sound this good. It's time. Hey! It's time once again to take a journey. So turn on the lights, pull your chair up, get a little closer to the computer, and get ready, because the journey's about to begin. You turn your radio on, and there it is. A faint station, wafting in and out of the static of the night. That's 0.2 miles away. A man named Eric running a show called The Midnight Cafe calls to you. The conversation seems strange at first, but as you listen, as his voice fades in and out of the static, you realize this is 
where you were meant to be, this is what you were meant to listen to. We will take a journey that takes us from the normal, well, all the way through to the paranormal and beyond. We'll talk about the knowns and the unknowns and everything in between. And together, perhaps we'll make a little sense out of this crazy world we all live in. One tenth out. What a great way to end this ride. I could have timed that better if I tried it. <laughs> so anyway, there it is. Let's go back into the radio network lab and uh, just kind of think about what we have come up with here. All right, well, there it is. I'm a little surprised, to be honest with you. AM propagation seemed to be better all the way out to the one and a half mile mark and seemed to cover all sides of the mountain except for the one side better than FM did. FM did have better signal strength going in one direction and the rest of it was either average, uh, you know, comparable to the AM, which is a part 15 for sure, or a little bit worse, which was surprising. Now look, this radio is capable of running at 15 watts. I was running it at half a watt. If I ran it at 15 watts, I have no doubt its signal propagation will be better. In fact, I know this for a fact because I built a couple of these systems for people who are interested in getting into community radio and nearly all of them, if not every single one of them, runs them at the full power and most of the units I sell are either 8 watts or 15 watts. So they're telling me in flat areas they're getting about five to six miles out of 15 watts and three to four with eight watts. So that's a consistent. That's not the drop-ins and drop-outs like we have here in the mountains. I would expect that with that half a watt, if we were living in a flat area, this would be about a two-mile range. About the same as the Hamilton Rangemaster with one-tenth of a watt. So an interesting comparison. Now radio fidelity, quality of the sound, the FM blows the AM out of the ground with that. I mean, it's just a way better setup. But on my end, I do mostly talk radio. I do play uh, oldies, you know, like 40s music, big band swing, stuff like that on the station that I run here at the house. So fidelity is not as big of an issue here. I guess that's it. If you have any questions about these FM or AM transmitters or how to hook all this stuff up, please feel free to let me know in the comments section. I might make a follow-up video. I love talking about community radio, part 15 radio, that sort of stuff. So I'm happy to do that. If you're interested in setting up a station of your own, by all means, reach out to me. I'll do what I can to help you. Um, I don't know the legal side of things, so please, in your country or in your area, check on what is legal and what isn't legal. I try to keep everything I do here on the farm as legal as possible. I do the Part 15. I, I follow the 9-foot rule. I mean, there's a whole bunch of rules on AM. FM, I'm not as familiar with, so please don't uh, ask me too many questions about the legality of this versus that. I just don't know. What I can tell you is stay out of trouble is a good idea. Most of the churches around here that use these FM transmitters, they've never run into any problem. And most of them, if not all of them, are running out of full 15 watts as well. I guess that'll do it for today. I'm Eric, the owner of Farpoint Farms and the owner of 1670 AM, the voice of the mountains. And I'll see you all next time. Take care. We're back live on 1670. And in a few minutes, we'll be getting live to another episode of the Midnight Cafe. Stick around.